Our reading is in Matthew uh, chapter 10, starting with verse 24. What page is it on the... 1030. 1030? Yes. All right, 1030 in your pew Bible. Uh, we use the authorized version in our church of King James Bible because we believe it is the Bible. Uh, verse 24, Matthew 10. Today's reading, uh, in our reading through the Bible in a year. It says, The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Amen. Verse 25. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. Uh, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, which they did, they called the Lord Jesus, they called him the devil. Do you know that? that they call, You know religious leaders uh, call the Lord Jesus Christ the devil? Can you imagine such thing as that? The perfect one. Never did a thing wrong. They could get something on me and rail on me for something. They'd get something on you too. And they'd probably get something on any preacher. But you ain't going to get nothing on Jesus because he never done anything wrong, did he? Amen. Yet they call him the devil, huh? Amen. <laughs> How much more shall they call uh, them of his household? We that are we're the child of God, we're in the family of God. Well, I don't have no battery and I'm on low power mode so I better start preaching fast <laughs> Facebook if all of a sudden I go blank it's because my battery run out <laughs> fear them not therefore my wife was smiling she's glad I ain't going to preach too long <laughs> fear them not therefore for there is nothing covered verse 26 that shall not be revealed whoa you know that deep, dark secret that you have that you, that you say nobody knows about in the world but you? God knows it. Amen. And one day it's going to be revealed and uncovered. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. Uh-oh. How many of you in trouble like me? We in trouble. Huh? We in trouble. Yeah, we in trouble. Whew. That shall not be revealed and hid that it shall not be known. All going to be known. All your wickedness going. You can hide it from the preacher. You can hide it from others. But you can't hide it from God. And one day it will be revealed. Oh, Lord. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach upon the housetops. And fear not. This is a big verse here. Text out verse. Look here. Verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now who is that can destroy the soul and body in hell? Who can do that? God. Some people say that's the devil. No, it ain't. No, the, 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 the devil can't send you. The devil can't send you. He wants you in hell. But only God can send you to hell. Amen. Yeah, think about that. Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Can you imagine that? The very hairs of your head are numbered. Isn't that something? I don't know how much the, I guess we could ask the smartphone, uh, how, many, how many hairs are on the head of an average person? And they probably got an answer for you too. The way this smartphone goes today. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Verse 31, Fear ye not, therefore ye are the more valuable than many sparrows. So it says here, uh, that we need to fear him that can send us body and soul to hell. Uh, you, you, you know, if you go to hell, you're going to have a body in hell that's going to burn and weep and wail, and it's going to have teeth to mash. Did you know that? Once his body dies here, uh, you, uh, you, you're you going to have a wicked, vile body that goes to hell if you're lost, or you're going to have a glorified body that's like Jesus's. I'm going to have me a glorified one. You know why? I'm saved. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I'm saved. Amen. I'm a born-again Christian. Glory to God. We go on. Nose of hair. Uh, fear ye not, for we are more valuable than sparrows. Verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Listen now. 
Another big verse, I texted this out yesterday, I believe. <clears throat> Will I confess before my Father which is in heaven? And whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Do you know if you never talk about Jesus and you never uh, uh, tell people you're saved and you never stick up for Jesus and brag on him, you know what? You ain't saved and you're going to hell. Amen. Whoa! Whoa! He says, I'm just, a, I'm just a silent Christian. Ain't no such thing. Amen. Can't be. Won't work. You're going to hell. I get a lot of criticism on this. I get criticized every day anyway. Don't matter. I just read the Bible and say what it says. Whosoever shall confess me before men. That's why I tell people about Jesus every day. I show them a tract. I tell them. I talk to them. Do you ever tell anybody about Jesus? You know why you don't? You ain't saved. You're lost as Hogan's goat. You're going to hell. The Bible says right here, if you don't tell people about Jesus, you ain't saved. <coughs> you ain't saved. Amen. Whosoever shall confess me before men, Jesus, talking, him shall I confess before my Father, heavenly Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me, before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. <laughs> wow. So he's going to say, what about this one? Put your name in there. What about so-and-so? Insert your name there. Put your name in there. Betty. Steve. Marcus. Greg, Samuel, David, Donnie, Pastor Varga, Rose, uh, Roger, Tawana, who else? Ben, who else? Tara, who else? Gary, who else? Tammy, put your name in there. The Heavenly Father say, What about Cliff? <laughs> what about Varga? And Jesus is going to say, Either he's going to put you in a positive kind. Yeah, they talk about me all the time. They try to get people saved. Well, amen. They're coming to heaven. Glory to God. Amen. They don't ever say nothing about you, my dear beloved son, Savior of the world. Shed your blood for the sins of the world. Uh, they never say anything. They never say anything about you. Never talk about them. Well, they ain't coming to heaven. They're going to hell. Because you won't confess. You don't confess Jesus. You ain't a Christian. I don't care. You say, like people tell me every day. Well, I don't see it that way. I don't care the way you see it. The only way I can see it is the way I read it, and that's the way I read it. And if you read it some other way, I don't see how you can. If you don't say anything about you're a Christian and you don't, you don't uh, recommend uh, Jesus Christ to others, uh, 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 you're showing uh, that you're not a child of God and, and you're not a believer in Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus won't confess you to the Heavenly Father and you go to hell. He said, I don't believe it. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm just reading you the Bible. Look at verse 34. This is going to be really controversial here. This is going to get you. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. You know, but just, oh, Jesus, Prince of Peace, everybody going to heaven. All that. No, 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 that ain't it. That ain't it. Listen about, listen about Jesus now. Look here, read it. Verse 34. Think not, verse uh, Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. Whoa, wait a minute. For I am come to send a man at variance against his father. Uh-oh. I'm going to be against my daddy. I was for 29 years. I was against my daddy for 29 years that I was lost, going to hell. I was against my mama and daddy. Amen. I was against my grandma and grandpa on both sides because I wasn't saved. 
I was at variance against my father and the daughter against her mother. Mama saved, daughter's not. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. We know daughter-in-laws and mother-in-laws got in trouble. How many of you know that from personal experience? How many of you women here know that? <laughs> All these women, they got all their hand up there. Yeah, that old mother-in-law. <laughs> well, you know what your problem is, ladies? You ain't treating them as good as mama used to treat them. That's the only problem. You got to wait on him hand and foot like mama did. You got to bow to him and call him Lord like his mama did. Amen, fellas? Amen. All you ladies say, fooey with all that stuff. <laughs> Tammy shaking her head, no. Yeah. All these women say, <laughs> I ain't trying to stir you up, ladies. So we know we got problem with the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law, amen? <laughs> oh, man, the classic example of a battle, huh? <laughs> just just treat that old boy good like Mama did, and you'll be okay. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> no, I'm going to get off that subject. Verse 6. And a man's foes shall be there of his own household. I've got, I've got uh, blood relatives, that's what your household is, that won't talk to me and hate me and hate the gospel. Then that won't speak to me. Some of them, if I call them on the phone, they curse me. You say, why is that? Because God sent a sword. See, some of you, you ain't like that. Uh, you save, but you run with your wicked blood relatives. They're a child of the devil, and they live for the devil, and they're your best buddy, and you run with them. I don't do that. Because there's a Bible doctrine called separation. And separation even extends to your blood relatives. Someone told me recently, I don't care what you say. Blood relation is the most important. No, the blood of Jesus Christ is the most important. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be for Jesus. The vast majority of my blood relatives are saved and children of God. I'm glad for that, but some aren't. And the ones that aren't, I don't run with them. They don't come to my house, I don't go to their house. You say, I, I think that's wrong. I don't care if you think it's wrong or not. It's Bible. It's Bible. Verse 36. A man's foes shall be there of his own household. Look verse 37. Let's pay attention to the Bible now. Who cares what... You know what? What you think don't mean nothing. What I think don't mean nothing. What God says, that means something. Amen? Amen. Verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me, Jesus speaking here, he is not worthy of me. Oh, well, I'm going to stick with mom and daddy. Well, if they're the devil and you won't, you won't take Christ and, and, and trade in your mama and daddy uh, uh, for Jesus, it's not worthy. Then you're not worthy of Jesus. You're not worthy of the Savior. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus is saying here, if you love a loved one, a blood relative, no matter what it is, more than you love me, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy to be a Christian. <laughs> Verse 38. And he that taketh his and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy. You know what it means to take up the cross of Jesus Christ? Sir, we're having church. Yeah, we're having church. No, we're just having church. That can wait. Yeah. You got to take up the cross of Jesus, even if it means forsaking your mother or your father or your son or your daughter or your blood relative. That's what it's saying right here in the scriptures, today's reading. Someone says, you're trying to pick on, I ain't trying to pick on anybody. I'm just a shoe salesman. If the shoe fits, wear it. Amen. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I'm just a shoe salesman. Not worthy of me. 
Verse 39, He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. <laughs> Lose your life and you'll find it. Someone told me recently, says, I ain't got nobody but wicked relatives. What I said, why don't you try God? Huh? Why don't you trade your wicked relatives in for God? Huh? You think God might be able to take care of you? Remember what Remember what Jesus said in another portion of Scripture? When they come and told them, Hey, hey, your mama Mary's outside with your lost brothers and sisters. You know, Jesus, when he was preaching on this earth, they didn't get saved till the cross, his brothers and sisters. I don't understand that. But they was outside of church, and mama Mary said, want to talk to Jesus. He's preaching. He's in the church house. She's out there on Ridgewood. Says, your mama's out there with your brothers and sisters. They want to talk to you. Did Jesus uh, quit his sermon and say, just a minute, folks. No. Mama's out there and my brothers and sisters, I got to go no. uh, talk to them a little bit. No, he says, uh, he answered them with this. He says, who is my mother? That's what Jesus said. Who is my brother? Who is my sister? He says, them that do the will of my father. So if you've got a blood relative, that's just is today's reading. If you've got a blood relative that's not doing the will of the heavenly father, what are you supposed to do with them? Separate from them. You ain't supposed to run with them. You ain't supposed to live with them. Unless they're little children you're raising up and then you do everything you can to get them saved. But once they're of adult age and are on their own living for the devil, you know, I wouldn't, they wouldn't live in my house. I ain't going, I ain't going to, they ain't coming from my house for Christmas and I ain't going to their house. He says, you're terrible. I'm terrible. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Now this is a big thing. And a lot of you that are sitting here right now, you don't agree with me. But you're wrong. And, you, and, you, and your wicked loved ones, your heathen loved ones, your unsaved loved ones, or your backslidden loved ones, they drag you down. Some of them on a daily basis. Some just at the holidays. But whatever. Am I telling the truth or not, church? Amen. Am I telling you the truth? Yeah. Yes. Just acknowledge it. Listen to the word of God. Do what the Bible says. I just wish some people would get right with God today. <laughs> Verse 40, He that receiveth you receiveth me. Amen. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. That's talking about the Father, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, you and me. We receive Jesus, we got the Father too. And we're supposed to be in the Christian family. What is that? That's a local church. That's a local church. A lot of people don't believe it. And someone told me, people tell me this all the time. I don't need to go to church. I have church at home. You can't have church at home. You can have church at home if it's a gathering. You've got Christians meeting there. But you can't meet alone at, at home because you, you ain't going to take the Lord's Supper and baptize people and, 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 and be uh, uh, have people check on you, see if you're right with God. And if you're not, they reprimand you, rebuke you, or put you out of the church. Separation is a Bible doctrine, and that works with blood relatives, not just with uh, anybody. And I pray Jesus, well, I, people tell me this, well, I don't agree with you. I got a different opinion. I think I've got God's opinion. I think I just read it here and read it to you. That, that's not what this is teaching here? Someone told me about this passage. That ain't what it means. Well, God help me. Tell me what it does mean. It means exactly what it says. I mean, isn't it as clear as the nose on your face? Just because you don't want to accept it. Just because you have another opinion. Just because you have the devil's opinion instead of God's. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. You ought to be good to God's people. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. There's rewards for being with God's people and honoring God's people. 
You're going to suffer loss if, if, if you honor the devil's people, whether they're where you work or your blood relatives. You're going to suffer loss, and you're going to be in a mess. Verse 42, And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, that saved people, new Christians, only in the name of, of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. So that we're done. Listen, dear one. A tough, tough sermon. But I just take it as it comes. That's the reading for today. I ain't picking on anybody. Someone in church here says, you're trying to pick on me. Am my low? I'm not. Someone out there on Facebook says, you're trying to pick on I ain't trying to pick on anybody. I'm just teaching and reading for today just exactly the way it says in the Bible. Now, I'm not cold-hearted, but you can like it or lump it. You can believe it or not believe it. Amen. Don't, come, don't come to me and straighten me out on it. I got people all the time who want to have a little conference with the pastor. They're going to straighten me out on my preaching. I said, I ain't changing my preaching. In fact, I'll tell you this if you come. I'll say, stay out of my preaching. It's none of your business. You belong to my church. Listen to what I say. Amen. God tells me I'm wrong. Won't you come try to straighten this preacher's... I don't preach what I don't believe. I guarantee you that. Amen. And just some, just some kind of a sorry church member come to me and try to tell me to change my preaching. I ain't going to budge a bit. And I'll tell you to keep your nose out of my business, too. <laughs> Huh? I'll tell my wife, keep her nose out of my business. She tries to nose in my preaching. I'll tell anybody. I'm God's man. You might, you see, I don't think you're God's man. I don't care what you think. I know I'm God's man and I preach God's word and I ain't going to change anything I preach until God tells me to preach it. Amen. That's the way it is. You see, I'm just giving you the cold, hard facts the way Jesus gives it here. Amen? Did Jesus give you the cold, hard facts here? Learn to listen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now. I love my church. I love these dear folks. <clears throat> so many people are on the wrong track. On the wrong track because of lost loved ones and bad associations. It tells us very clearly here in the end of this chapter of our relationships with others whether they be blood relations or just other folks. Help us now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You see, I'm a born-again Christian. Preacher, I'm a born-again, blood-washed Christian. Raise your hand up. Say, I'm saved. I know it. I bless you. I see your hands. You can put them down. Some could raise their hands. Some couldn't. You say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. I need you to pray for me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. Slip your hand up. Let me see your hand. Slip it up. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Is there another? You don't know. You couldn't raise your hand. You knew you were saved. Wouldn't you just ask for prayer and I could pray for you? Maybe you could be saved. Amen. Anybody else want to slip their hand up? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Anyone else? Yeah. God bless you. Yes. 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 Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're in the soul-saving business. Like you saved me April 4th, 1969. Got a good bunch of hands raised here in church today. They need to be saved. I don't know about out there on Facebook. Could be some out there too. Don't have the witness of the Spirit. They're not sure they're born again. I pray they get saved today. God save them. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, which I am chief. That's what Paul said. I echo what he said. Any of us in here that are saved, we all come the same way as lost sinners, repenting, turning from our sins. I got it. Others have had it. Why don't you get it today? Why don't you be sorry for your sins? No, you can't save yourself. Repent. Say, Lord, be merciful to your sinner and save me. I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that God had raised him from the dead. And I'm calling upon you right now, dear Lord. Call upon him right now. Say, save me, Lord. I'm a lost sinner. I'm trusting in your shed blood and the power of your resurrection. Save me right now, dear Lord. If you've done that in church today, you meant it in your heart, confessing and forsaking your sins, heads bowed, eyes closed, just slip your hand up, said, I did it today, preacher. 
Slip your hand up. Let me see it. Yes, yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I hope there's been many out there. I hope there's been many out there in the listening audience that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Nothing else matters. To attain heaven through the blood of Christ and the power of his resurrection. That's all that matters. Everything else is in vain. No other way to attain it. Giving money, doing good works, being baptized, having a daddy that's a preacher or a granddaddy or both. Nothing will do. Just confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. Calling upon God. Thank you for these that have called today. Thankful for we that have called in the past. Thank you, dear Lord, for your precious blood. Thank you for the family of God. Thank you for the food you've provided now. Bless our fellowship around the table. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.